You would think that after having back surgery, that life should go back to normal. Well, that is not the case for everyone. But did you know that psychosomatic causes can actually exasperate this condition as well? Hi everyone, my name is Yvette Rose, founder of Metaphysical Anatomy Technique, which is a gentle, graceful healing technique that is designed to help you to shift trauma, stress, anxiety, depression in your life as well. And what I love about it is that you don't have to talk about the trauma, you don't even need to remember the root cause of it, and you also don't have to be needing to recall any memories associated with it either. You can find out so much more at yvetterose.com. And guys, Welcome to today's topic, which is failed back syndrome. Now, you know, after spine surgery, you would expect that your back or your neck would go back to normal and would be resolved. But sometimes that just doesn't happen. Now, whether maybe immediately or months after your procedure, pain and other symptoms can actually come back. And this is a phenomenon called failed back surgery. In the past two decades, there have been a dramatic increase in fusion surgery in the US. And also in 2001, over 120,000 lumbar fusions were performed. And that is a 22% increase from 1990 in fusions per 100,000 population, increasing to an estimate of 250,000 in 2003 and 500,000 in 2006. Now, in 2003, the National Bill for the Hardware for Fusion alone was estimated to have skyrocketed to $2.5 billion a year. Now, apart from financial symptoms, let's also look at the common symptoms of failed back syndrome. What you can be expecting to, or to observe if you have a client that's struggling with this is a diffuse, like there's a dull, aching type of pain that involves, you know, back or the legs as well. There can be abnormal sensibility, maybe including you know, like really sharp and prickling stabbing pain in certain extremities as well. And the term post-laminectomy syndrome, right? This is also used by doctors and to, to indicate to some extent the same condition as failed back syndrome as well. Now, many medical and emotional factors can actually contribute to the onset of developing FBS, including residual or recurrent spinal disc challenges. It can be herniation, it can be persistent post-operative pressure on a spinal nerve, it can be that there's altered joint mobility, joint hypermobility with instability, there can be scar tissue, depression, anxiety, and the list can go on. Now, an individual might also be predisposed to development of FBS because of maybe systematic disorders such as diabetes, autoimmune diseases, and also peripheral blood vessels disease. Now, when we look at researchers, because what they now believe is that failed back surgery occurs anywhere between 10 to 40% of lumbar laminectomy. And this is now for these surgeries with or without spinal fusion. Now, in other studies, it also shows that 5% to 36% of people who undergo a disectomy for a lumbar herniated disc saw their leg and back pain return just two years after the surgery. And now also with growing aging populations, the number of spine surgeries is increasing. And that means that the number of FBS cases is also growing. Because now between 1998 and 2008, the annual lumbar fusion rate now has skyrocketed to by 170%. And the lactectomy rate also jumped. A report also from Spain noted that the investigation and the development of new techniques for instrumented surgery of the spine is not free from conflict of interest. And the influence of financial forces in the development of new technologies and also its immediate applications to the spine surgery shows the relationship between the published results and also the industry support. And authors who also developed and defended fusion techniques have also published new articles praising new spinal technologies. And also the author calls spinal surgery the American stock and exchange and also the bubble of spine surgery. Now, recent studies have also shown that cigarette smokers will routinely fail all spinal surgeries if the goal of the surgery is to decrease pain and impairment. Surgeons consider smoking to be an absolute contraindication to spinal surgery. Nicotine appears to actually interfere with bone metabolism 
through induced calcitonin resistance and also now decreased osteoblastic function. Now, it might also restrict small blood vessels diameter and also leading to increased scar formation. Now, there is an association between cigarette smoking and back pain and also chronic back pain syndromes of all types. And also in a report of 426 spinal surgery patients in Denmark, smoking was actually shown to have a very negative effect on fusion and overall patient satisfaction, but there's no measurable influence to the functional outcome. Now, many patients also believe they know, and as I said earlier, emotions can exasperate the also already pain that the person is feeling in their spine. But let's also have a look at perhaps, per there's some reasons as to why a person has become really sensitive to perhaps developing this condition in their life as well. Because of course, first of all, this is a secondary issue and we need to be looking at what was the initial cause as to the reason as to why they needed to have the, pain, the spine surgery in the first place. But at the end of the day, the psychosomatics that could have caused this to flare up even more or actually causing the pain to come back. Now you'll be looking at the initial cause, meaning the reason why the person needed the surgery in the first place. You need to have a look at that as well. And you can find out the root cause of that actually in Metaphysical Anatomy, which is a big book about 679 medical ailments, where I explain the psychosomatic emotional stress behind a lot of ailments and to help people to understand what is the suppressed emotional message in their body that's trying to come forward, that wants to be addressed, but it's not coming forward because the body doesn't speak, you know, you know, a language like English. It comes forward in the form of pain and discomfort and dysfunction and so forth. Now, when we look here, for example, Failed back syndrome, here we have it. Failed back syndrome, right? So if we just look at some patterns of people who have this condition that they will all commonly share globally across the world. So here you might feel, you might feel that life has failed you. Your physical body is caving in from all the responsibilities that you feel that you're holding on to. And you seem to be feeling responsible for everything and everyone's happiness and also their health. While you put your emotional and physical needs last. And you might have been taught to serve and always to look after other people's needs before attending to your own. And people might not always appreciate your efforts and strain you and the strain that you went through to help others. So there's a huge feeling and trauma also associated with feeling underappreciated, not feeling seen and yet still feeling like you have to keep it all together like you have to pull the wagon and hold the foundation on which it rests on together as well so this is condition is all also actually showing you how to allow yourself to be supported but to create the kind of support that you really truly need and to not see support as a weakness because the pain also is telling you that there is suppressed anger due to failed boundaries that you've not expressed in your life and normally those boundaries is towards the kind of support that you need in your life as well and as well the kind of support that you gave to others which maybe was a little bit too much so you completely overextended yourself because you don't have good boundaries with yourself either and you need to learn to understand where is that fine line of knowing and understanding where your boundary thresholds are and to love yourself enough to know that you can express communicate and verbalize that as well and to not allow people to use or hold the concept of rejection over your head as a way of trying to manipulate and control you so there you have it, guys. So remember to go have a look at yvetterose.com, see what I'm doing, see where I'm at. I would love to connect with you even one day. And hit the subscription bar as well. I almost forgot. Stay, stay with me. Follow me. <laughs> guys, and also until next time, be the light that you are. Thank you for watching this video. And I'm sure that you learned a lot. So guys, subscribe to my channel here and also hit the notifications bar and so that you can get notified every time when I upload a new video. So guys, also remember to share the video and also look out for courses that I have below in the description bar. And until next time, be the light that you are.